Welcome, everybody, to the Competition Archery Media Podcast, where we explore all things pertaining to competition archery. I'm your host, PJ Riley, and the CAM Podcast is brought to you by O'Neill's Classic Archery. And we are in the CAM studio today with Casey Caulfield. Hi. Fresh off your World Cup win. First one ever. Yeah. And f- before we talk about the medal, because I haven't looked at it yet, because I want to see this thing, <laughs> but... How does that feel? What is it now? How many? It's been like a week. Oh, not even. Not even a week. Yeah, no, it's, it's been, Friday. Since Sunday. Since so. Sunday. Yeah. How's that? You're still smiling, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It uh, it feels really good. I um, I put a lot of work into like I call it my Europe trip. Um, I went from yes. World Championships in Berlin to Paris, and I stayed in Europe through that. So it was a long, a good end to a long trip. So I'm very happy with how it went. All right. I want to see this thing. Yeah, this is this is my medal. That's it. <laughs> Can we see that on the camera there? Rende Archery World Cup Paris. Man, mm-hmm. that thing is sweet. Uh, and so you have other World Cup medals mm-hmm. from other World Cups. Everyone's different. Yeah, everyone. The design and all that. Yeah, each year they usually have like a a little bit of a new style or at least a different ribbon. All the yeah. ribbons get really cool, it's, but he- it's hefty too. Yeah, first that's got some weight. First individual medal have a lot of mixed team ones, but first first individual uh, World Cup medal. Did you put this in your carry on when you flew back so you could, had to take it out? Sorry, TSA, I have to take this out. It is no. metal in there. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't do that for that reason. But um, I, I like to keep it with me because I don't want to get like lost in luggage or right. anything. Yeah. What do you do with them? I don't know. Uh, do I, have- I most people like you put them in like display cases and stuff. I hang yeah. them on doorknobs over all over my house. Like they're just hanging. Like I have like a little loft area that my room is in, and I like I'll hang them on my bedroom doorknob the bathroom oh, nice. doorknob the closet door- i don't know why it's just doorknobs <laughs> is where they end up <laughs> that's cool yeah so you tell me so world cup it, you tell me for you what that means and w- the work that you put into that uh to me it means a lot i've definitely put been putting a lot of work into a goal like this over the last few years um I knew going into Paris, I hadn't shot well at individually at the other World Cup so far this year. And so I knew for the final, I had to do well. I knew for sure if you win it, you're guaranteed to go because all yes. the stage winners get to go to the World Cup final. But um, I knew I at least, at least had to do really well. Um, so going into it, I worked on a lot of things, changed some things um, mentally from uh, World Championships because I ended up fourth, which is kind of good but kind of bad at the same time like I don't individually know. You were individually fourth. i was fourth so um that kind of lit a fire under my butt of like i'm not leaving europe without a medal that's what i told heather i was like i'm not i'm not gonna go back home empty-handed like i'm gonna nice. come home with a medal so yeah um yeah it felt really good to like apply everything that i worked on since um getting to europe where does a world cup rank for you i'm guessing the olympics is number one yeah where is world cup then um what would be number two yeah i'd say like so like for me like the prestige goes like olympic medal world championship medal and then like world cup medal i'd gotcha. say yeah, so yeah. yeah it feels feels really good and at the time did you i i have since learned that you're only the second american woman to ever win mm. a gold at a world cup yeah the other one was <clears throat> I think I Mackenzie in 2015. She won. won a silver. Oh, okay. Oh, then it would have been Jenny or Nichols. Bronze. It was someone. Yeah. Like Steve Yoder told me her name, and I can't remember it. I now. think Jenny Nichols. It was a while would have been, ago. Yeah, the last one. But yeah, so it feels kind of cool to keep making history. Yeah. Yeah. Did you know? That you were only the second at the time. Not really. No. I just figured some, I, I didn't really realize like World Cups haven't been a thing that long. Like Olympics have been a thing for like ever, but right, they've only right. been like, I think maybe like less than 20 years of World Cups. So like, I would have thought like there would have been more, but yeah, it's kind of yeah. cool to know like I'm one of the, one of the few. Do we have any individual Olympic medals on the women's side? Um, On the women's side, Denise Parker. Denise Parker. That's she would have been one. Yeah, way mentioned. back uh, eight in the eighties, I believe. Yeah, 
So she wouldn't have shot a World Cup. Yeah, she the World, have World Cups that. wouldn't okay. have been around yet. But yeah, gotcha. I believe she um, a team medal and uh, individual medal. I believe. What? So now you go to the World Cup finals. Mm -hmm. Have you been to that before? I have. I was at the um, World Cup final in 2021. It was in Yankton. Okay. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that one's a different format. Like it takes a while to get in there. I mean, mm -hmm. only eight go from yeah. each discipline. Mm -hmm. And it's just matches. Yep. And no qualification, just yep. boom. And it's interesting how they do it. They don't do like um, a bracket based off the points. They actually pull names to see who shoots against each other. Ah, um, okay. It makes it, it makes it fun because um, like everybody – pretty much in that top eight is at like the same level, you know, like everybody's good. So like, yeah, it's not like you're like, Oh, like I'd rather shoot against this person than this person. One like they're versus all 64. Yeah. Like they're all good. So it's, <laughs> yeah. it makes for some really good matches. And is it single elimination? Yep. If you're, if you're out, you're out. It's just a Jeez. quarter bracket. Then it goes semis and finals. So you could go down there all that time. Mm -hmm. First match. Boom. Could be. Could be gone, yeah. I think I remember Jimmy Lutz saying that happening to him, and mm. he didn't like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's in Mexico. Where at in Mexico? Is it a place um, you've been before? I've never been to Mexico, actually. So oh, this will haven't? be a first okay. for me. It's in Hermosillo. Uh, it's apparently in the middle of the desert. So oh. that'll be... That'll be okay. fun. Get my get my tan on, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> and that is that's just in two weeks. Yeah. Um, not too long after our national tournament. Yeah. yeah. National tournament, of course, starts mm -hmm. next week. Yep. Uh, at, which is also part of the first Olympic trials. Yes, that's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how, obviously, it seems like you're peaking at the right time, <laughs> yeah. I would imagine. Yeah. So, how does it feel to you with your training? Are you seeing what you wanted to see? Yeah, I'm definitely going into it feeling confident. i um, been having a good streak of tournaments recently, so I'm um, hoping to keep that going um definitely at the point where like i'm ready for a break so i have like these two two and a half weeks left yet and then i'm gonna take some time off because it's been a it's been a busy long season so, yeah yeah but i definitely still have that left in the tank and ready to do well at those last two events are you training every day every day every day you're shooting something yeah every day other than travel days yep how many arrows um, the last few days I've done 200 a day, um, 200. just because just getting home, trying to like get back to the time zone and everything that's been tough, but, um, yeah. been trying to like follow along with the trials schedule. Um, so I've been shooting a lot around Robin matches, 72 arrow qualification, stuff like that to get ready. How, well, before we get to that, let's stick with world mm -hmm. cup. We haven't covered all that yet. We got to <laughs> get all the good stuff. Uh huh. So you went into there, you shot, I was following your first half, especially of your qualification. Yeah. Bam, you were number one. <laughs> oh, well, tied, tied number one, I think. It was, yeah. it was a good yeah. round. And then the wind picked up, I think I heard. Yeah, not a lot. It was actually like, I'm surprised nobody shot a world record that day. Like it was, it okay. was a good day of weather. Um, the first half was absolutely perfect. I didn't aim off at all. The second half, it was like just enough to where like you started thinking you might have to aim off. And I feel like that's tough. Like I would rather it just be windy and know I have to aim off because yeah, then you yeah. just do it. But I felt <laughs> like I, my, I had like a lot of like 9.9s or like 9.8s that were like just out because I was like, oh, I should have aimed off that one. But then I'll aim off and it'll be on the other side. Like I was just like doing the little back and forth thing that sometimes happens when it's like uh -huh. a little bit windy. But it was still still a good round. And yeah, I kind of just used that really good first half to carry throughout the rest of the qualification round. And you ended qualification seated third. Third. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Is that the highest you've had at a World Cup? Yep, that was the highest I've ever qualified at a World Cup. How did that feel once you yeah. saw that final score? Yeah, that felt good. I knew that would put me in like a good position in the bracket to like have right. a pretty, not easy day. No, no day at a World Cup is ever easy, but like it's better than being ranked like lower, so to yeah. say, because you shoot like if you're ranked lower you shoot against higher seeds if you're ranked right. higher you shoot against lower seeds so it kind of put me in a good position and i knew like i just had to shoot three good shots at a time and hopefully it would work out <laughs> and i forget your matches uh, until you got to like the quarterfinals mm -hmm. did you have any close ones or shoot offs or um through till like the 
I think until the quarters, I had won like seven three or six two, so like pretty comfortable. And then right. my um, quarters match, we went to a shoot off, which oh, I yeah. was, yeah. I that, was that the Choi Me Soon. That was um, Peng from Chinese Taipei. That's right. Um, okay. Yeah. So that was before we did the on stage matches. That was like the last match you had to win to get to the finals. Right. Um, and all I like, we were shooting both really well. Like it was like you shoot a 29. Usually you're like, okay, I got that one. Like yeah. I shot a 29 at one end. She shot a 30. And I was like, <laughs> like, oh my God. Like it was crazy. Like there was one end. I shot a 29. She shot a 30. So she got that set. The next one, I shot a 30. She shot a 29. So I got that one. And then the last one. I remember like we both shot 29s and I was like, I, Chris Webster was standing behind me calling arrows. And so I was like, did I get it yet? And he goes, one more arrow. And I was like, oh, one more arrow. I was just like, it was just like so much, like it just felt like I had shot like a hundred arrows, but it was like only a couple yeah. ends, you know? Um, so then we went up for the last arrow and the, I won for the shoot off, but the shot felt a lot better than it was. I, I like, it felt like I remember like I let go. I was like, Oh, that was a beautiful shot. It was like a low 9.5, which like in a shoot off, you kind of like to shoot a 10, but it was yeah, good yeah. enough to win. I had like a 9.5 and she had like a 9.3. So just got it. How, so tell me, I have never, ever been in that situation, <laughs> but what is the shoot off arrow like? What are you feeling yeah. when that happens? Yeah. All I'm thinking is like, if I like all I, all I can think is like, if I shoot like a good shot, like wherever it goes, it goes. Like I can only control what I do. Like if I shoot a good shot, it's going to go where it's going to go. Hopefully it's the 10 in this case. It was just, just a little low, but that's okay. It still worked out. So like my goal is like, I don't want to pay attention to what the opponent is doing. Like if she shoots first, oh, well, like if I shoot first, then great. But like, I right. was just getting up there. I was like, okay, just make a quick, good shot. And so we shot like at the exact same time. And I feel like everybody- You shoot at the same time. Yeah. Uh, so like okay. I was, usually I try to like shoot first. Cause if I put a 10 down there, then she sees it, she gets nervous, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we, we were, we're both shooting pretty fast so like we kind of shot at the same time and then we looked back to like everybody watching and like nobody knew at first because they were kind of <laughs> close so like it close. wasn't like you could tell yeah yeah, at, yeah. right at first who it was so we kind of looked back and everybody was like quiet for a second i turned around to chris and he was like I think you got it. And like my, yeah. my legs like just went jello. Like I, like I, like I did the thing where like, I looked like I had just run a marathon. Like I was bent <laughs> over like hands on my knees. Like I was like, Oh, I was like dying. And I was like, okay, I, like I did it. It's all good. I can breathe now. <laughs> it was, it was just like super high intensity match. So I stink at archery <laughs> nowhere near in your league, but for me, I just know I'd be up there saying, the whole time I'd be saying, I'm going to miss it. I'm going to miss it. I'm going to miss it. <laughs> you can't. Obviously, you train yeah. <laughs> not to do that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, how do you, how do yeah. you keep that out? You just got the demons. Yeah. Like going into the day, I knew like if I second guess myself at all, I'm like, I'm going to lose. Like you have to be confident. You got to be huh. the most confident person on that field. And you got to believe that you're the best because nobody gotcha. else is going to believe it for you. You know, like, so you I just like got to walk in with all the confidence and like, I'm not one to like walk around and be like, like, I don't, I don't like the whole like cocky, arrogant no, thing. So I just keep it on yeah. the inside and tell myself, you know, you're the best. It's funny. You mentioned that we were talking to Jacob Marlowe about something mm -hmm. at an ASA this year. And he was talking about him competing in open mm -hmm. pro. And he's like, man, I can't judge. But he said, and he said it just matter of factly, he's like, mm -hmm. I think I have the best shot out there. He just, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to, I certainly can't <laughs> argue with him, but yeah. I could tell it was like, well, that's confidence. Yeah. You know, and then he said, but judging distance, he's like, that's I can't do yeah. that. So. Yeah. He's honest. That's good. <laughs> but anyway, so that's awesome that uh -huh. you're able to do that. Okay. So you get through that one. Now comes Choi Me Soon, who mm -hmm. you have a history with. <laughs> Tell us about that. So to say, yeah. Um, so <clears throat> last year at the World Cup Series, like every time I got out individually, it was to a Korean. And so I was just like, okay, like this is my year. Like I'm no matter who it is, I just want to beat them. And so um, <laughs> last year in Paris, I made it into the top eight. And to go to the stage, I shot against Choi and she beat me. I think it was seven, three. Um, so that was definitely like a little disappointing. Like I really wanted to like 
have that finals on the stage. But luckily this year we didn't shoot until the semis match, which she's always fun to shoot against. We both like always shoot a really good match. So like it was, it was really nice to shoot against her, like actually on a stage match instead of like in the prelims. Right. Yeah. And so you beat her. What was the score? It was six, four, six, um, four. Okay. Yeah. Both, both the matches <clears throat> on the stage were six, four. And I remember like specifically in the, in the Choi match, we were 4-4, four, four, right? And, like, I shot first because I was higher ranked. Like, I can choose to shoot first or second. Yeah. And so I chose to shoot first. And, like, all I could think was, like, if I shoot a 30, she can't beat me. Like, that's, <laughs> like, I was, like, if I shoot a 30, she can also right. shoot a 30 and we can do a shoot off. But in this moment, if I shoot a 30, she can't beat yes. me. Um, so I get up there. I shoot my first shot. I'm, like, oh, 10. Shoot my next one. Ooh, 10. Okay, one more, one more. <laughs> and then I shoot it, and it's like a 10-9 liner, but it was called it. And then so I was like, oh, okay, I that did it. it. I did it. It's in her hands. And she had 10-10, and then she shoots the last error, and I think she had an 8. So, yeah, I was gotcha. just like, all I could think was, if I shoot a 30, she can't beat me. Huh. Yeah. See, that would be the recipe for me guaranteeing uh -huh. that I'm not going to shoot a third. <laughs> oh, my gosh. We need to we need to work on this. We need to work on this so, negative self-talk. <laughs> how how fast is it then from that match to your gold medal match? Or wait, no, you would have had one before that. No, before it, the gold medal. Or no, you went right to the gold medal. It would have been semis and then um, the bronze medal match would have shot. Okay. And then the gold medal. So what's the what's the time span there? Are we talking um, like 20 minutes, 30 Yeah, minutes? like 15 to 20 minutes about. I mean, do you just stand backstage or do you shoot some more arrows? What what Yeah, happens? there's there's not enough time to shoot more really. Okay. So, um they have like a little tent with chairs and there's actually like a TV where we can see the match that's shooting currently. Yeah. So, um I usually just sit and watch the match cuz it's something to like occupy my mind other than what I'm about to go do. Yeah, yeah. Um, cuz yeah, I just don't like to think about it. Like I just like to just get up there on the stage and like start just go. You know. Yeah. And so the final was against Lisa, how do you pronounce your last name? Barbalon. Barbillon. 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 She's French. <laughs> She's French. And you're in Paris. Uh -huh. So, I mean, I imagine the crowd there yes. was just nuts. Yeah. It was for her. It was probably one of the loudest matches I've ever shot in. Like, it really? was really cool to see, like, how much they, like, just wanted to cheer her on and, like, the patriotism like it was just great like it was i like of course like it's a little weird when they're not cheering for <laughs> you but um it was still cool to see like like how much they supported yeah her. has she I, I don't know that name you probably know her mm -hmm. has she been to that level before um i i'm not sure if she's shot for a world cup medal individually she made the top eight for world championships not this past year but the year before okay um and she i believe won world or not world championships european championships um not this past one but the one before okay you've shot against her before um i don't believe i have actually no okay no yeah maybe in teams before we have in like france versus usa but i don't think ever individually no so, all right, so you go up there uh -huh. on stage, shooting against her, and I forget how that match went because actually all, yeah. I only saw the last three arrows. Okay, yeah, um, this match was it was a good match. We went back and forth, which is usually like it's nice to like start with a lead and like keep that going. But she actually started the first set up. Um, so I didn't have a good first set. I was not being smart. So she went two nothing. And yep, so there she was, is. she was up two oh, and then this next set, I fixed some things, went a little bit better. And, uh, um, what do you fix? Like in that moment, what kind are you of fixing? like, I, I, I did something stupid on the first set and let me explain what I did. That was stupid. So I was, it was totally still the first match was just aiming middle. And like, I have this problem where like, I I'm so scared that I'm going to like shoot out the other side when the wind starts. So then I was, it was going right to left. So I aimed like right nine and it wasn't a good shot. Cause I wasn't being like confident about it. So then it went two right eights and I was like okay like stop being stupid like you know what you're doing you're here like don't be don't be a dummy and be smart yeah. so after that I was just like okay like make smart choices aim middle make good shots and it went you can better. see it is blowing a, a yeah, bit just yeah. a little bit like but I don't think it was enough to really move the arrows a whole lot and you can see I'm shaking here yeah somehow they're still going in 
staying in there. Yeah. Yeah, but. And you took this set. I did take oh, this well, set. Oh, she has to shoot her yeah, last she, Yeah, I yeah. believe she's a nine here. Now, this was one thing I noticed we're going off kilter here, but it uh, seems to me like she has a deep hook. She does have a deep hook. Yeah. Um, I like I am like on the yeah. tips of my fingers. There's you. Right you you there. can kind of see like my bottom finger is barely on. Right. Um, but she has a pretty, pretty deep set hook in there. And I think like it kind of just depends on the person. Like I've seen people shoot great with either. It's kind of I mean, just, you know, like, yeah, she's right there. Yeah. I don't know. I've always been like more of a fingertips kind of person look at that what's but, your what are you pulling what weight are you pulling there uh 40 pounds 40 pounds yeah so not not Man, a whole lot doesn't move but look at that now when you see that do you see, like to me that's not moving <laughs> is it moving to you um, like a little bit that was that one wasn't bad there was there was a shot previous where i was looking at it i was like oh i look like a leaf in the wind <laughs> but yeah this was the this was the last set here and like you can just see her target, like she's been shooting super consistently. Um, but that's the beauty of like set points; like it can go back and forth like that, depending on each each end. So, oh, this is the last set. Okay. Yep. So this here, this is the one. This is the last arrows here. I remember, like, all I could think was like, just one more, one more good shot, one more good shot. Did you pay attention to what she did here? Here, it was a big moment. Um, I wasn't expecting this to be honest because she was shooting so well. Like that was the yeah. first thing out of the out of the yellow she had all match. So so here, this was what I noticed there that that I did see that a little on bit your of shaky. Arrow. I was like, <laughs> oh man, she knows if she just yeah. shoots a ten because you probably yeah. saw Chef uh, said he said she, she hasn't, hasn't <laughs> left the gold boom in the red. Yeah, I was like, I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know, like like how how the, that happened but it was just up to up to chance you know but we we both shot super well and i was just so happy for her happy for myself it was yeah you could see like we just so, so happy for each other do you other. speak french or does she speak she english? speaks really good english she yeah okay. so she was like you did so great and i was like you did so great <laughs> so actually before i went out and shot my semis match she had shot hers already in one and I was like walking out, getting ready to go up on the stage. And she said, like, you won't like you need to win this. Like, I want to shoot this gold medal match together. Like she was so oh, like oh, oh, she I was so <laughs> sweet. She was like, I want to shoot like I want it to be us in that gold medal match. So like she's just so sweet. I love her to death. Yeah. Yeah. So. OK. So then that happens. How, what's the time frame you win it till you get the medal? Um, there's like. It actually goes pretty fast. Like I went back, I took all my quiver and stuff off and I did like a quick interview with World Archery. Um, and then there were like a whole bunch, all my teammates were there. It was super nice. They were all congratulating me. And um, and then we kind of lined up and got ready to do the award ceremony, which was stupidly emotional. Um, like that was the first time like individually I've one and like when they do that you they play your na national anthem. yeah so i i was i was crying the whole time <laughs> it was like <laughs> i was just just tears and tears it was it was just like a really special moment for me yeah for sure now yeah. at what point do you call back to mom and dad um when did i call oh we um so i got my medal we walked back into like the tent area grabbed my bows and stuff and then i was walking back to like pack up and I called my mom and I actually made a deal with my mom which I didn't I think I heard about this I didn't deal. remember until I called her and then I was like oh my god I remember so I made a deal that if I was I have tattoos right I love tattoos um I made a deal that if I was second or third that my mom and I would come up with a tattoo that we both liked that I would get but if I won <laughs> if I won then you it would be pick. my choice, no questions <laughs> asked. <laughs> so um, I didn't remember this until I like there was so much going on, I just forgot. So I answered the phone. She answered the phone, and like um, we were just chatting for a minute. She was like, "Oh, she did so good, da da da." And then she goes, "So what's this tattoo going to be?" And I was like, <laughs> "I like I was like, oh my god, I forgot about this." And then I. <laughs> 
I told we her. need to have a camera when they get it. I, yeah. <laughs> I told her what it was. Um, I don't. <laughs> what is it? Okay. This is going to, it has no, all my tattoos so far have meaning. This one has absolutely no meaning. I just think it's funny. Okay. So here, let me, let me get the, so it's going to be like roundabouts this area. Uh -huh. I want this eventually to turn into a sleeve. Okay. So this is like the second progression of the sleeve, right? Yes. I have my feathers. So up here. It's gonna. This is gonna sound crazy. I'm a 19 year old girl. This sounds like something like a 50 year old biker dude would get. Okay, where it's gonna start with. It's gonna be a skeleton from the waist up. Okay. Wearing a cowboy hat and a bandana. Okay. And in one hand, he's gonna have a revolver, and in the other hand, he's gonna have a cigar. And they're is both. Is this like a the cover of a Leonard Skinner album I feel or like something? It is. I feel like this should be on something. Like it just. It's it's great, like a new like cigar brand or something, and so like they're both kind of the the revolver and the cigar are both gonna have smoke coming up from it, and it's okay. gonna come like up and around my shoulder. And now, where in the world did that come from? Um, that's a great question. <laughs> I, I don't I don't really know. Um, I remember I was just like looking at like Pinterest is great for like tattoos and stuff. They have so many pictures. And I saw this one. It was like um, just like a dancing skeleton. Like it was just like a skeleton and like a funny pose. And I was like, oh, that's funny. But like I like I don't I don't really do dance or anything. But I've always said when I retire, I want to be a cowboy. I don't really know what that means. But that's what I've always told everybody. I want to like have a ranch and like Casey, I just want to ride horses. So you understand. Okay. Yeah. So this will be cool for you when you're going to college and stuff. Yeah, this but is Carol Coughlin I know, we're talking about. I know, here. I know. I told her, and I told her this. I told her what I just told you, right? And the phone is silent for a minute, and then she goes, "Okay," <laughs> like that. She was, she was not, she was not thrilled. But um, we'll 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 get there. And she was like, she was like, you know, like you're, it's gonna be on you forever. And I was like, yeah, mom, that's what a tattoo is. And um, she goes, well, like, aren't like. Uh, like once you're a grandma, like what do you think your grandkids are gonna think? And I was like, I want my grandkids to be like, Meemaw's cool. She's got a skeleton tattoo with a revolver and a cigar. <laughs> I don't know. I just think it's. I think it's. I think it. it like it's very much so. Like me. Like I. Yeah. I, no question there. <laughs> I'm just trying to picture your mom with that tattoo on there. Yeah. CEO of Lancaster Archery Supply. She's going to have the skeleton. Oh, it's not her, for her. Oh, you I thought, thought you said the both of you were no, getting no, no, them. No, 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 oh. no. Oh, that would have been crazy. No. <laughs> that's I that's think, what I was thinking. No, I, I think, thought you both were going to get uh, them. PJ, PJ. No. It's, <laughs> oh, so man. it was, okay. we were going to decide on one that she I would gotcha. like and that I would like. She that would give I you the get. approval. But she's not going gotcha. to have the tattoo. Okay. Yeah. Whew. Yeah. All right. So. I feel better now. Okay, you feel better now <laughs> knowing your boss isn't going to have <laughs> yes. a skeleton tattoo. Yes. Cause yeah. I would have to say, Carol, I have to see this tattoo. <laughs> I, I would just have no, to no, ask no, no. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, that one's, it was one that we could both, it was either we could both agree on one that I would have. Yes. Or I would just pick whatever design it was for me. She's not getting any, gotcha. any tattoo. Okay. She's, yeah, she's not so into that. <laughs> <laughs> um. So now, uh, Heather, your coach, she yes. was not there with you for this one. No. She was at World Championships. Yes, she was at World <clears throat> Championships, which we did like a camp and then the World Championships. Right. Um, so it was like two weeks. And then we took the week in between before Paris, like still staying there. So it would have been like a long time for her to be there. And like she has right. to work and she also has like a little three-year-old. So it's, gotcha. yeah, it's hard to keep her like... <clears throat> away for a long time but still like even throughout the whole tournament i was texting her i was calling her for I was, sure like, yeah updating her on everything and um she woke up early every morning like because of the time change like we qualified early in the morning or one of the mornings we shot I was one of the days in the morning yeah, yeah maybe yeah. team round day it was early yes, in the morning correct. and she would still wake up and watch so so yeah so this the, your finals match was at what time was it afternoon it for was you af where you were? Yeah, it was afternoon, okay. so it would have been morning. I was going to say, I, th I thought it was like mid-morning uh -huh. when I saw that you had that you had won. Mm -hmm. So your phone must have been like, boom, yeah, on fire. It was, yeah. I remember, <laughs> um, I think, 
I don't know who had my phone while we were, I think our team leader, Leticia had it um, in her pocket. And she was like, you need to take this thing. It's like, it's a bomb. <laughs> like it's blowing up. And she was like, you need to, you need to call everybody. You need to text everybody. You need to post pictures. And I was like, I was just like, I remember like the bus ride back from the field to the hotel. It was like 50 minutes. And like, I just spent like that 50 minutes making all my calls. <laughs> I was like looking through all the pictures, deciding what I wanted to post. And yeah. Were you able to answer every text? I think I did answer just about every text. It might have been a little delayed on some because like we went and did like a little celebration yeah, and stuff. I think but you got to mine yeah. like, I think it was the next day. The next morning, maybe. Which is fine. Yeah, yeah. That's I was, okay. Yeah, I was like, I was like mom and dad are first. <laughs> Absolutely. And then brother, Steph, my boyfriend, coach. Well, Heather was up here too. Heather, okay, let me tell you the order so nobody gets upset okay, that I called people. Let's get it. I called my mom and my dad. <laughs> I called Heather. I called Steph, my boyfriend, and then I texted everybody else. That sounds good. <laughs> that's the order. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's a logical yeah. order there. Um, so then when you came back, mm -hmm. what's the reception been like? Oh, it's been good. Yeah. yeah. Um, a lot of people have been like so welcoming and so nice. Been like, oh, congratulations. Watched your match. It's awesome. So um, like going back, over, I went over to the um, shop and like everybody was super excited. So I was very thankful that everybody was following along. Is it so next week is national championships. Is mm -hmm. it difficult for you to come off of a big win like that and then have to shoot something like national championships? It's not mm -hmm. just another tournament. Yeah, um, definitely. Like coming back, I you normally after a big tournament like that would like to take a little bit of a break, but there's not much time for a None. break. So um, I'm still like working almost full speed still working on the time change but um working as hard as i can to get ready for national championships so like even though like this tournament might not be like like it's still olympic trial so i wouldn't say it's like not as big as what the world cup was but right. like it's just different so it's not like i'm like treating one differently than the other like yeah. trying to keep the training and intensity all the same and we should mention that we know the U.S. has at least one position, mm -hmm. thanks to you, yeah. from World <laughs> Championships. Mm -hmm. What was that like when you learned finally? Because as I recall, the, the scoring system for it was kind of not very clear. Yeah. The, and it was, did she get one? Did she not get one? Yeah. And, the wording on the rules were a little, like, they you could interpret it either way. But how it went was so... Um, individually if like the top three archers who hadn't qualified spots already would qualify spots so the top right. four was alejandra valencia who had already qualified a team spot was she was in one. the top four so then the other spots went to the next three so marie who won um the girl from japan that i shot against um in the bronze match and then myself gotcha mm -hmm. so you know that there's at least one spot mm -hmm. but obviously you want three yeah we really want that team spot so and how does that happen in april we have the chance to win team spots at the pan am championships um so that'll be like all the countries from north and south america shoot in a tournament so since mexico already has their spots that's like a big help to us because they're like our biggest competitor like from north right. and south america you know so um that'll be nice we just have to win that tournament at Pan Am Championships, and we'll get our team spots. You just have yeah. to win. That yeah, tournament. <laughs> I think I, I'm confident that we'll we'll do it. We've been progressing a lot as a team, um, and I feel like we've been doing really well. So um, I have no doubt that we wouldn't get the spots there. But um, if we say we don't, we will. But say we don't. Yes. Um, <laughs> there's the final qualifying tournament as well, which is all the teams who haven't qualified their spots yet uh, right. shoot in a bracket and i believe it's maybe just top three that get those spots gotcha. um and then outside of that it also goes i don't know how many there are 12 teams that go total so if there's any left over then it goes to world rank and right now the u.s women i believe are eighth or ninth and okay. so out of like 12 hypothetically teams. there's 12 teams so as long as we're kind of in that Top 12-ish, we should be good. But I'm confident that we'll get it at Pan Am Championship. So 12 teams would be 36 women. Mm -hmm. Is that how many 
go to the Olympics? So there will be 30, 36 from teams and then also 36 individual. Oh, so, and they could be, mm-hmm. com- so that could be 72. Uh, oh, wait, actually I'm mistaken. Or would that be? Well, no, sorry. There's 64 total. 64. So, okay. Yeah. So there's 36 and then whatever to make up 64. Eight, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. That and sounds like math. Yeah. So is that like nerve wracking for you? You know, wondering how many of us are going to go. Mm. There's one spot you have to compete for that yet. I guess we should tell f- yeah. people who don't know you earn the spot, but mm-hmm. that doesn't mean it's yours. Yeah. Yeah. You so still have to go through trials. Yeah. It's just the quota. So we'll do trials to like determine who fills that spot. And so we start that with that. We take the two qualifying days from um, nationals and then we'll do an extra day of round robins on Sunday for the top 16. And and that gets you to the top 16. Okay. So they cut after uh, the qualifying and then those top 16 will do round robins. And then does that, I think that gets you to eight. Um, I think the next stages, the next two stages after that still have the top 16 and then the final stages will be only eight. Okay. And that's like next year. Yeah. That's way in the spring slash summer next year. All right. So before we get to that, national championships. Mm -hmm. How many of those have you won? Uh, National championships, uh, five. And I believe that's in a row, row. isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So you're 19 now. So since you were 14. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Does that, do you ever stop and think about that? Um, Yeah. I feel like when I was little, like I didn't think much of it but like thinking now like like i'm thinking like okay what if like today like there was a 14 year old that came in and won like that would that like that's definitely different (laughs) yeah it's crazy yeah and that you're still shooting at that level yeah it's been a long time like kind of progressing are you better now I feel like I'm what were your now. scores back then? Do they you remember? Weren't, they weren't as high as they no. are now. Okay. No, yeah, I think I, <clears throat> I think the first time I won, I shot a thirteen oh five, and the last time I shot a seventy or a double seventy two was like maybe like a week or two before I left for Germany. It was like forty points higher than that. So gotcha. yeah, come a, come a long way since being fourteen. <laughs> Seventy two hour round, what's your best score in competition? In competition, a six eighty two, which I shot at the last year or last time's Olympic trials. Okay. Yeah. And in practice, what's your best? Six ninety two. Six ninety two. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. So ten points to does Anybody difference. like I hear them talking compounds. Seven hundred uh-huh. is kind yeah, of benchmark. Yeah. Does anybody shoot seven hundreds in recurve? Except for Brady, not really. <laughs> I mean, yeah, seven hundred. That's 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 tough. Like that's yeah. shooting like that's only fifty nines. Yeah, occasional right. fifty eight. You know, like that's that's tough stuff. And like weather is always a part of it too. Like you can't like most days aren't world record breaking weather days. You know, you got to right. find a find a really good day. So. There's a tournament this weekend mm-hmm. that Lancaster Archery yep. is having that I'm shooting for fun. So I'm shooting it at the 50 meter. Mm-hmm. And so I'm sitting there. I have my compound bow. It's 50 meters. You shoot 70. Mm-hmm. But I have my compound bow. I have four, a five power magnification. Mm-hmm. I can't keep them all in the gold <laughs> there. I know your ring is bigger, uh-huh. but you have no magnification. Mm-hmm. You're shooting a recurve mm-hmm. and it's 20 meters farther. Mm-hmm. To me, just shooting that, I'm thinking, I don't even know how you keep them on the target, <laughs> let alone primarily in the gold. Mm-hmm. What's your, I think I saw on your aperture there, you do have a pin. Yeah, like a fiber. Okay. Yep. What does that look like when you're looking through that aperture what do you see so like the whole the whole target right goes out to like the white the aperture kind of encases from like the black rings in and then the um the fiber is yellow so it kind of well it's like a green so it kind of blends in with the yellow which i kind of like because then it's not like 
I feel like if I had it too bright, I'd be looking at it a lot more. Right, right. So right. I wanna, I always just look at the target, and then the fiber is like fuzzy, like out of focus. Yep. Okay. Um, so that's kind of kind of what I'm seeing. And so it is it covering the whole yellow? Um, no, it's like the so the fiber is like. I don't know the actual size of it. I'm not good with like those numbers, but it's small, right? Right. So it's small. And then like the size of the yellow compared to like the fiber, I'd say it's like the size of my thumbnail I see. And then like the fiber is just like this little circle in the middle. In the middle. Yeah. That's insane. I can't, I can't even imagine that. Yeah. And to you, well, I guess not having the magnification, you probably see less movement. Yeah, like it, it kind of just like floats a little like bit, but when you have right. it magnified, it all looks it's, so much bigger. Yeah. And so is your thing just you're concentrating on the middle uh -huh. and that when it breaks, your brain's going to correct it and put it in there. <laughs> I guess, I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kind of just focus on like looking at the middle and then just keep moving through the shot. And then when it goes off, I just keep my eyes there and watch like. You keep your eyes there until you see the arrow hit, and then I start the next shot. So the um, so the clicker, that's mm -hmm. the other part of recurve archery that always intrigues me. So uh -huh. you, because you all get right to the point, uh -huh. like your draw is the same mm -hmm. every time with no stop mm -hmm. at the back end, like I have, uh -huh. and yet you get right to the edge of that point. Yeah, and so then you're aiming. And then you're just kind of expanding through while you're aiming. Yep. So and that click goes off. Yeah. Kind of my strategy is like, so I'll get back to full draw. Sight will be there. And then like, I'm just focused on my front side moving towards the target and this backside moving away. And that kind of creates like a good like direction. And yeah. like, for me, my biggest thing I'm like trying to feel for in the shot is like, just like feeling like I'm putting that arrow in the target. Like I'm moving towards the center. Okay. Yeah. If you if you do something wrong and you know it, what's what do you usually do? I do you it. have a tell? I hate it when I do this. I so <laughs> like every now and then like I might hold a little long, right? And like when you're on a stage like that, you don't really have time to let down. Yeah. And so sometimes like if I'm holding a little long, like I'll, like I'm just doing everything I can to like keep trying to move through, but sometimes like you use all your energy for that and then you forget about like actually following through. So like sometimes like I'll just kind of like normally my follow through is like this, right? Yeah. Sometimes it'll just be like, and it like won't really, <laughs> nothing will be like smooth. It's just kind of like blah. Yeah. And I hate when I do that, but it doesn't happen super often. Just every now and then, like if I'm like holding really long and I don't have time and like, I just have to use all my energy to like make it click and yeah. then the follow through is just like, now, Not good. <laughs> do enough of those shots hit in the yellow that you say, "Ah, oh, I can get away with that." I try or do they pretty much yeah. all go bad? No, I sometimes they do. Oh. Like I get a little lucky, and they might hit. Usually they're low. Like it'll be okay. like a low nine eight line most of the time. But sometimes if I feel it happening, I aim a little high because I know it's going to go low. <laughs> but I try not to. I try not to because I feel like if I do that, then I think it's okay, but it's not okay. That's so, the thing. <laughs> There's so many cheats yeah. in archery that you can have. So I try always to just make make a good shot yeah. and not think about like, oh, if I There's just aim a little high. There's nothing that compares to yeah. a good shot. Yeah. When like a good it, shot's it's good, just, it's bam, the best. It's there. Yeah. But, yeah, I find myself cheating a lot. Oh, Mine man, is slamming can't. the trigger. Oh, yeah. You can't really do that on a recurve. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so what does this year look like for you? I believe you're taking a year off from school. I am, yeah. So I'm just training. Yeah. Olympics, man. Yeah. I'm kind of glad that I decided to take a year off because I would be in school right now. Right. Um, which is, like, really tough. Like, I would have... Flown, I would have been flying home from Paris the first day of classes, which for me, like, that's just, that's a lot of stress. Yeah, um, yeah, and, yeah. like, I wouldn't have wanted to, like, during Paris, like, think about, like, oh, like, I have to start school when I get home. Like, I just like to focus on one thing at a time. So, like, for me, just doing archery is, like, it's much more manageable than focusing on archery and school. Um, so, taking some time off. Um, How does that work? Like, what do you tell Texas A&M? So... Hey. 
I'm yeah. gonna be gone for a year. Yeah. So I um I emailed like my advisor and I said like I'd like to take they call it like a sabbatical. Um, okay. so I'd like to take a year off to train for like, and you kind of have to give a reason. Like, it's not like, I don't want to take a year off to be a lazy bum. No, um, <laughs> like you kind of just have to say like, oh, I'm taking a year off to train like for the Olympic games and for whatever yeah. tournaments and stuff. So I'm sure at a school that big, that's mm-hmm. probably not unusual. Yeah. Like the, track and yeah, other sports. There's like a lot that. of big sports at A&M. So yeah. archery isn't the biggest one, but, um, I, they were very understanding and like, okay, like she's training for something like very important, you know? And so then when the Olympics are over, you can just go in and pick up and keep going. um, Yeah. And when I, if I choose to go back, um, like I'll just have to redo like my degree plan a little bit because it'll be a little bit off. Like I'll, this was supposed to be my sophomore year, but then whenever I go back, it would be my sophomore year. So I just have to change classes around a little bit and, um, get back into the swing of things. <laughs> and I mean, that's because for, you know, people have different priorities for you. Mm-hmm. Olympics. Yeah. This is it. Yeah. Yeah. Like a lot of people my age, like they go to college and they are thinking about like, Oh, what job am I going to get? Stuff like that. And like, right. to me, like this has been my job since I was 14, you know, like that's kind of just all I know. And yeah. it's something I actually really enjoy doing. Like, it's not like it's just, I'm stuck with it. You know, right. like I, I like competing and I love traveling all over the world to all these different tournaments. So for me, it's like, would I rather spend time doing like school, which like I like, but it's not like what I love. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So have you imagined yourself with that being that color, but having those Olympic rings in there? Yeah, definitely. Um, been thinking about that a lot more since the olympics will be in paris next year and we actually got to shoot on the stage that the olympics like that will be the archery olympic stage um so the fact that i've like shot on that stage and also won a medal like all i'm gonna do for the next year till we get there is visualizing that happening at the games instead of the world cup and the format's the same Mm -hmm. basically what you just did and there was no one who wasn't there Correct. Who mm-hmm. may show up at the Olympics, who would be like a yeah. favorite. <laughs> yeah. I mean, all the best mm-hmm. archers were there. Yeah. I'd say most of the people that are at all the World Cups are the people who will also be at the Olympic Games. Right. Yeah. So that's, I mean, I'll use my words, not your mm-hmm. words. I mean, that's, that could have been the Olympics I in get, terms of people. Yeah. That, that definitely like the skill level was there in those matches. And so I could definitely see like, those top four being there again next year. I mean, that's got to make you feel pretty good that Mm -hmm. you're like, Hey, yeah, I can do this. It's not like wondering, can I compete at that level? You're there. Yeah. So it's been a goal of mine for a long time to, um, win a world cup gold. So it feels, feels really good to have accomplished that. You have more competitions this year yet. Isn't there something in October? Yeah. In, um, November we have Pan Am games. Okay. Yeah. What is that? Who goes to that? What does the outcome of that mean? Yeah, so Pan Am Games, um, the team for that is me, Jennifer, and Catalina for the women. And then Brady, Jack, and Jackson for the men. Um, So at the Pan Am Games, you can only qualify individual spots for the games. So for the women, we already have our individual spots. So we'll just be going like to win medals just for the Pan Am Games representing the United States. But the men, they don't have any team spot or individual spot yet. So that's a big opportunity for them if they win um, individually or win mixed team. Those are the two ways that they can qualify spots. So the women can help with the mixed team, um, but the guys individually can also um, win their spot by winning the Pan Am Games. That's right. So you you would need to have an opportunity to win mixed team. Mm -hmm. You need somebody to get in there. Yeah, so... Yeah, it's um, it's looking good, I think, for the guys to get their individual spot there. Brady and I won um, at the last Pan Am Games. That's how we qualified our individual spot at first gotcha. for um, Tokyo. So hopefully they'll do the same this year and get the individual men's spot. What's that like, the gap? I mean, this time the mm-hmm. gap between Olympics was shorter mm-hmm. uh, because of the COVID. But what's that like for you, this like four-year buildup? And it's like... Wow, yeah. this is it this uh-huh. is the super bowl yeah um i feel like it's different 
leading up to this one than the last one because like I've had so much more experience since Tokyo, you know, like right. been shooting well at like world championships. I have got to do two finals there between the last two um, now world cup. And also like with mixed team, we've shot a lot of stage matches. So like, I feel like I've had a lot more experience just in pressure situations like they're like it's going to be at the games than right. like previously leading up to Tokyo. So I feel like a lot more prepared already and we still have a year, year to go. So, and Tokyo was weird anyway, cause nobody was there. Yeah. And I mean, does that even feel like it was an Olympics from, from what, like all my teammates who had gone to the games before, like what Wookie Brady and Mackenzie said, like they were all like, it's, just insane like the amount of people that are yeah. there like all the media all like the people in the crowds cheering and so to not like to expect that and then not have it like it it's not that it didn't feel like an olympics it just wasn't what i was expecting yeah, yeah. so i feel like in paris it'll be a lot more like what i expect of an olympic game so to say yeah all right well that is another episode of the competition archery media podcast casey caulfield congrats on that killer medal Thank and you. we wish you the best of the luck with trials and all your tournaments for the rest of the year and thanks for being here of course thank you for having me folks the competition archery media podcast you can find on all the platforms wherever you find your favorite podcast thanks for being with us today